Okay, applying reflections as far as transformations go. We have two different types of reflections that could occur. We can either attach a negative to the entire function. What's gonna happen there is it's gonna be a vertical shift. It's gonna reflect it about the x-axis. So if we start with log base b of x being this kind of blue graph here, if we apply a negative, what's gonna happen is it flips it upside down vertically. The other type of transformation we have as far as reflections go is if we apply a negative, on the inside of the logarithmic function directly to x. Whenever we apply a negative directly to x, what happens is it's gonna be a horizontal movement. It's gonna be a reflection about the y-axis. So it's like saying the y-axis is where the mirror sits and this has mirrored the entire graph to the other side. Let's try to apply a few of these, um, get a good idea of what this is gonna look like. So we wanna graph log, the common log of negative x. So what I like to do is start out with just log base 10 of x as the parent function, identify its key points, and those are always gonna be one zero, and then the base, in this case, it's, it's an understood 10 because it's common log and it's not identified, so that's automatically base 10 comma one. All right, to apply this negative transformation here, um, this is gonna be a reflection. I'm gonna classify it as a horizontal reflection we could say a reflection about the y-axis means the same thing. Okay, so what that's gonna do is it's gonna reflect everything that was on the right-hand side over to the left-hand side. So let's identify these key points. If we move them to the other side, what's gonna happen there? Well, we're gonna go from positive one, zero. It needs to move to the other side here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the sign on our uh, x value. So that's gonna go to negative one, zero. Very similarly, we had 10, one. As we reflected all the way across here, what's gonna happen is the X value is gonna change. So that's gonna to go to negative 10, one. The rest of the points on this graph also change, basically their sign. So they're going to also be on the left-hand side of the Y axis. And let me get this, it should be increasing the entire way. It's a little bit difficult when they're so close to the X axis to get a good graph going. But what should look like is happening here is it should look like the exact same graph as what we have on the left-hand side, except for it's been mirrored the other direction. So it's shooting off to the left-hand side now as opposed to the right. All right, now as far as the domain range and vertical asymptote goes, the vertical asymptote is still gonna be at the Y axis. So we'd say that's an equation of x equals zero. The range on every single one of these logarithmic graphs is gonna be from negative to positive infinity, but then the domain has changed. As you can see from our graph, it goes to the left forever. So that's gonna be negative infinity out that direction. And it comes to the right, but it stops before it gets into positive values. So what we're gonna say is it's, it stops at the vertical asymptote as zero, and it's not going to be included because we have a vertical asymptote there. All right, with that in mind, let's use the work we've already done and try to go one step further. Okay, our next graph, what we want to do is graph negative log of negative x. Now we've already graphed log of negative x, so I'm going to use the work we've already done. If I was working on this one, I would do the parent function, I would do one of these transformations, and then apply the other one. So since we've already done the work to find uh, some key points on this, we said negative one, zero, and negative 10, one, as being our key points, and sketch that in. I'm using the work that we just did up above to get this graph. Same exact logic. But then let's use that to apply this other transformation. How I'm gonna classify this one is we have a negative attached to the entire function. That's gonna be a vertical reflection or a reflection with respect to the x-axis is another way to say the same thing. So what that's gonna to do to each one of our key points is it's not gonna affect this one because it's on the x-axis, but what we wanna do is all the rest of these points they are gonna change from being above the x-axis to below or these points down here below the x-axis are gonna get mirrored up here to the top. Um, so what happens is all the y values change basically. So these key points, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the sign on the y values. 
So like I said, it doesn't affect negative one zero because that, you know, you switch the sign on zero, it's still zero. So that's still negative one zero. But the other key point that we're kind of tracking around negative 10 one is gonna to go to negative 10, negative one. And kind of connecting these together doesn't affect our vertical asymptote. That's still gonna be right here at the y-axis. So we can say that's when x equals zero. Our range, as always on these logarithmic graphs, negative to positive infinity. And again, the domain here, it goes off to the left-hand side forever. So we'd say negative infinity or our x values out there. Then we get very close to the y-axis, but we never quite get there. So we'd say it's limited. It's gonna stop at zero, actually just before zero, infinitely close. All right, hope this helps out as we're learning about reflections. Be careful about where the negative is attached. Attach directly to x, that's gonna change your sign on the x values. Attach to the entire function, that's gonna change your sign on the y values. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck on graphing transformations of logarithmic functions.